I had someone email me the other day and ask me, what curriculum do you recommend for a small group? What curriculum do you recommend for an adult Bible study lesson? I write uh, curriculum every week, Bible study lessons every week for three different uh, LifeWay series, a Masterwork uh, series, the Explore the Bible series, and the Bible studies for life. And the short answer is my favorite is the Masterwork series. And what this series does is it takes best-selling books. Uh, this particular uh, piece will study two books, I Will by Tom Rainer and Boring by Michael Kelly, essentially on how to make your life not boring by uh, following God. And they will turn them into a curriculum. So you get, in essence, a condensation of two different books uh, every, every quarter. And uh, for reasons I'm about to describe, that'd be my favorite curriculum series. Before I get into why, I'd like to talk for just a second about why we need curriculum in the first place. Uh, a lot of groups want to get away from curriculum. They, they'll just say, well, we're just going to uh, study study the Bible and it sounds real sp uh, spiritual, but I want to talk to you about a couple reasons why I think it's a good idea for you to have some kind of curriculum of some kind. The first reason is to keep you balanced. There is a tendency if you just say, you know what, we're just going to study what God lays on our heart, or even if you say, we're just going to go through the book of Galatians this time and John next time and, and so on. There's a tendency for you to get on to your favorite topics and stay on those. And it you got to ask the question, when is the last time you studied the Holy Spirit? When is the last time you studied the second coming? When is the last time you studied hell? When is the last time you studied uh, the these various topics? And uh, one of the things that curriculum writers do is they look at not only what we are going to study today, but they look at, at what are we going to study over the next year or two or three. And they're going to make sure that we stay balanced and we get in the Old Testament and the New Testament and we deal with every major doctrine and we don't neglect anything. We don't overemphasize uh, something. And we're called upon as teachers of the, of the word to teach the whole counsel of God and to teach the whole counsel in more or less a balanced way. And that's what curriculum does for us. One of the things that curriculum does for us. Another thing that curriculum does for us is it gives us something to study outside of class. I often say that an informed group makes for interesting discussion. In fact, whether or not you use a curriculum, if you do use curriculum or if you don't use curriculum, I've got a suggestion for you. And that is, I would encourage you to often email your group and say to them, this week we're going to be studying thus, this, that, or the other. Get online and Google this a little bit and read about this. Or go on and watch this particular YouTube video and we're going to discuss it for a little bit. But give your people something to think about ahead of time. If it's a short biblical book you're going through, say you're going through the book of Esther, you might encourage encourage your people to read through the entire book of Esther every week in, in, uh, d d during that, that, that study. But uh, a curriculum does that for us. It gives people something to think about uh, before class uh, so that when they come to class prepared. And an informed group makes for an interesting discussion. An informed group makes for an interesting discussion. Now let me talk to you about one, the, the problem with nearly all curriculum and why I like the Masterwork series. And the problem with nearly all curriculum, I say nearly all curriculum, uh, I certainly haven't used every curriculum known to band, but the curriculum that I've used tends to have a bit of a problem. And that is, there tends to be the writers of the curriculum will get together and say, okay, we haven't studied the, the, the Gospels in a while. Let's study the, the Gospel of John, for example. And then they'll say, let's find someone who can write something brilliant about the Gospel of John. Let's go find us a writer out there who can find something, who can write something brilliant about the Gospel of John. And we'll put that in, in, in our curriculum. Well, it turns out this is an almost impossible job. Uh, I I've tried all my life to write something brilliant about various topics. That is, I've tried all my life to write a best-selling book, but you know what? I haven't done it. I've read, written a few books, gotten a few books uh, published, but none of them have been New York Times best-selling books. And uh, it is incredibly hard to say to someone, all right, I want you to go out and I want you to write something brilliant about this book of the Bible or about this topic. But it is fairly easy to find someone who has already written something brilliant. And uh, this is why I like the Masterwork study, because Tom Rainer is a reasonably competent uh, uh, writer. Uh, he has written a number of best-selling books, and when he writes a book, it's going to be good. Uh, I would encourage you, I've asked this question to a number of groups of Sunday school teachers and pastors, and the question was this, when is the last time you read something out of any Sunday school curriculum that was life-changing? And I'll tell you, the normal response is people will laugh out loud. They will laugh out loud. And then I will often follow up that question with another question. And that question is this. Have you ever read anything out of a Christian book that was life-changing? 
And people will always shake their head and they will nod and they will say, yeah, I have. In fact, if you want to reverse engineer discipleship, in other words, most of us are a little bit frustrated that we're not doing as good a job as we'd like to do in terms of making disciples. But a question you might ask yourself is, how have we made disciples out of the people we got? The people who really are living the disciples' life, how did they get there? And I would argue one of the ways they got there is somewhere along the line, they stumbled onto reading good Christian books. One of my favorite verses in the New Testament is where where Paul says, and don't forget the parchment, especially the books. Don't forget my coat and don't forget my books. And uh, I I remember writing or reading that that and writing in in the margin of my Bible years ago and, and, and saying, books have always been important to the people of God. And most of the people who have gone up the mountain of spiritual maturity have read J.I. Packer's book on knowing God. They have read our R.C. Sproul's book on the holiness of God and so on. They have read the great Christian books. In fact, on my website, mybiblestudylessons.com, I've got a whole section on what I call the great books. And in this section, I would encourage you to use as the curriculum J.I. Packer's book, for example, Knowing God. Ask your people to read it. I've done this a number of times and I found that many people will actually pay the, the, the price to buy those books and they will read those books and then we get together, we study those books. Ultimately, we get together in class. We're not really studying the book. We're studying the Bible verses on which those books are, 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 are based. But this is what the Masterwork series does. It takes best-selling books, it takes great books, and it condenses them, and you get some of those every week. And that's why I think it's one of the best curriculums out there. I would encourage you to take, take a look at that.